So now let's say you have to do a lot of animations right there and setting keyframe on each one of them might be tedious. So what you may want to do is uh, use something called driven keys. So let me take an example right here. So let me take something like a cube and I'm going to take something uh, uh, like uh, this cube right, another cube right here. So what you can do is you can set one as the driver and another one as the driven key. So I'm going to select this shape right here. Let's say when I move this object from top to bottom, I want this to uh, move from this axis from Z uh, back and forth in the Z axis right here. So let me just go back just like that. So let's say I want to use the top and bottom for this one. So I'm going to select this object and on the Y. So this is what I want to set in the driver key. So on the Y, I can right click. I can go to uh, animation right here and I can say um, uh, not not animation sorry in the expression I'm gonna set it as a driver so this is the driver key now and I'm gonna go over here now and what I want to do is I'm gonna mo move this into Z axis so I'm gonna go into Z axis I'm gonna right click I'm going to go on to expression and I'm going to say set driven key and that is relative not absolute right now we're going to go for set driven and now once I select this object, these two objects are linked now. And if I were to drag this up and drag this down, you can see that as I move this object up, this actually moves um, backwards. And if I move down, this moves just like that. So it is quite related to each other. So now if I were to add in a keyframe, for example, uh, if I were to move this up, for example, move this over here down, and you see that there's animation on both of them now because they are related. So you don't, do not need to add in individual keyframes to all of them just like that. Another thing you can do is you can work around with the settings right here. Right now, everything set is set to the relative, which is a simple way to actually set the driver key right here. So I'm just going to double click on the driver and you can see that this is how it actually works. These are the nodes. So position Y is the input and the output is position Z and it's direct one to one relation right here. So you can see that this is the input and the output setting and these are the parameters. So right now the output is from uh, one to one ratio. So as I move this down, it moves the exact same location on the output upper. If I were to change this into something like 400, then the change becomes drastic as you can see. So it becomes like four times more than what it is actually used to. I can also go over here and say something, let's say for example, like uh, around 10. So it's only 10% of what is being applied right here. So the cool thing is you cannot, uh, you don't just apply this in uh, the motion, but for the, uh, um, for actually straight motions, but for rotations as well. So let me grab another cube. Let me create a copy of this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this as a, as a driver key again. So I'm going to go over here and on the, uh, let's say let, these are set into automatic keyframes right now. So I don't, I do want to turn that off so that I don't work around with this, right? So just go over here. And now I'm going to work around with the Y axis again, and I'm going to set this as the driver. So set driver. And for this one, I'm going to, for the driven one, I'm going to go around for the rotation. So I'm going to go into the rotation right value right here, right click expression and set driven relative. So as I move this up, you can see that now rotation takes into place just like that. So can be really good to actually work around with wheels and so forth, just like that. So these are the rotation as you can see. And if you were to create multiple versions of this, they work together as well, just like that, as you can see right there. All of them are related as you can see right here. So you can double click on this. You can go on to the cube right here. So let's just go on to the range mapper. And if you were to decrease the output right here, so you can see that you can decrease the number of spins right here on the first one. And as I move it, you can see that both of them move at a different rate. So this can be used for a variety of uh, settings right here. So let's see, for example, what we can do with it. So let's say let's create multiple wheels. So I'm just going to go over here onto my spline. So let's go over here onto spline and I'm going to bring in my flower right here. So I'm going to extrude this out. So let me just extrude the flower out uh, right there so that this actually becomes like this. So I'm, I'm just going to go over here, give it a bit more depth. 
So let me increase the depth of the object right here. So the, this is the division. Let me just increase the depth just like that. There you go. So I'm going to create multiple copies of this. But before that, let me just set the driven key itself. So let's use the driven key as uh, my cube right here itself. So this is my control. And I'm going to move this left and right, but this has to rotate. So this is what I want. So I'm going to set this as driven key and on the cube side, I'm going to click on the cube on the coordinates. I'm going to uh, set the uh, X axis. There you go. So right click, express and set driver. And on this one, I'm going to set the rotation. So on the extrude, uh, I'm going to set the rotation. So I want to make sure that it rotates this side. And this is the bottom right here, this one right there. So I'm going to go over here and to extrude. I'm going to right click on the rotation and then I'm going to go to express and set ribbon relative just like that. So as I move uh, this forward, this actually rotates just like that. Now I'm going to create multiple copies of this just like this and let's drag it forward right here, drag it forward. I can also drag all of them right here just like this, select all of it and drag it forward just like this. And now as I go around the extrude, let me just change the settings of each one of them. So this is the main extrude right here. That's fine. Another one, just double click here. On the range mapper, I'm going to set this half. So this is 360 degrees. So let's say this is going to be 300 right here. Not exactly half, but anyways, you get the idea. So 300 and for this one, I'm just going to go over here into range for this one. I'm going to add something like 250 so it rotates uh, uh, at a lower speed right here. For this one, I'm just going to go over here, double click. And then for this one to instead of 250, I guess this is already copied out. Double click right here. This is 360. That's fine. This one is 300. That's fine. This one is uh, 250. All right, there you go. This one is going to be even slower. So I'm going to go over here. This is not 250. This is going to be 200. So it is getting slower as it goes forward. So I'm going to go over here as well. Double click and then go over here. And on the upper round, I'm just going to say 150 right there. And the last one right here. So double click and this is going to be around 100 just like that. So once everything is done, now let's see what happens when I move this. So all of them has to move in a different speed. You can see that all of them are moving in a relatively different speed just like that. And you do not need to set individual keyframes to them. So you can see that this is how it actually works out. All of them rotates around at individual speeds right there. And this one moves the farthest. So you can add in a keyframe right here. So I'm going to set auto keyframe. So I'm just going to drag this onto the left, onto the right, for example, and onto the left again on to the right again and all of them are moving at a relatively different speed so move it way forward right there and move it back over here as well and let's see how this animates out now so if i were to play this around you can see that all of them moves at a different speed just like that and you do not need to work around with individual keyframes for all of those objects. So that is how you can work with the driven keys inside of Cinema 4D. Hope you guys learned something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share and subscribe.